There's been a lot of talk about the demise of Kmart and how this once mighty giant is heading towards oblivion. Back in the day, Kmart was the king of the tale, but those time are long gone and very few people remember them. That is why today we'll be exploring the fascinating origin and tragic downturn of Kmart. The story of Kmart starts all the way back in the 1890s with this guy, Sebastian. Sebastian Krisky. Born and raised on a farm in Pennsylvania, Krisky made his big break by traveling across the state as tinware salesman. He did that for about five years until 1899, when he had saved enough money to settle down and start his own store. Krisky's idea was simple, to sell everyday goods for either nickel or dime. In his store you could find anything, from fishing bobbers and playing cards to tea kettles and perfumes. This simple concept was so successful that Krisky started opening stores left and right. By 1912 he had built 85 stores and his newly incorporated company was worth 7 million dollars. He breezed through World War I like it was no big deal and even took his company public. By the time the Great Depression came around, Krisky owned 600 stores, 20 of each were in Canada, while his competitors went bankrupt. Krisky took advantage of the drop in share price and bought a lot of his shares back from the public. During the 1940s, when the Allies were busy fighting in Europe, Krisky was raking in $20 million in sales annually, even in his old age. He remained a brilliant businessman. He successfully predicted the rise of suburban shopping and by 1953 he had already built 40 stores in suburban areas. Towards the end of 1950s, however, the concept of variety store with fixed prices was giving way to a new idea. The discount store, where prices were still cheap but were not fixed to specific levels. Krisky opened his first discount store called Kmart in 1962 and he made it much bigger than his usual ones with its own plaza and a lot of parking space. His aim was to fit as many products as possible and the store attracted so much traffic that he would turn his inventory over 8 times per year. Suffice to say, the Kmart brand was an instant success and Krisky poured millions into it. Just one year later, he had opened 63 Kmarts and his company was approaching $1 billion in annual sales. Now, depending on how old you are, you may have heard the phrase attention Kmart shoppers a couple of hundred times. Those words were part of the now infamous blue light special where a certain item would have its price drastically reduced at random moments since nobody knew when or what would be discounted. People would sometimes spend hours strolling around their local Kmart waiting for a sale. The blue light special became a key part of Kmart and was used constantly up until 1991, after which it has only been seen intermittently. Sadly, Sebastian Kresge passed away soon after starting Kmart. He died in 1966 with a net worth well into the billions, leaving behind a charitable foundation that is still around today. Not long after his death, the new management replaced the Kresge name with Kmart, officially killing off the last remnant of its variety store days. Without Krisky's leadership, however, the company began to struggle. Their sales did keep on climbing until the early 1990s. But this was simply the result of them opening new stores with borrowed money. In reality, Kmart was losing market share. Walmart could readily offer lower prices on the same level of goods, while Target sold a slightly higher class of products. 
Kmart responded by buying barely related businesses like Sports Authority and Office Max, all the while refusing to upgrade or redesign their old, declining stores. Walmart surpassed it in sales in 1990 and Kmart's answer was to open even more stores despite rising levels of debt. At their peak in 1993, Kmart had over 370,000 employees and annual sales of $37 billion and yet Despite that, their financial situation was horrible. Just one year later, they reported a loss of almost a billion dollars, and that is when everyone started to panic. By 1995, almost all of the unrelated businesses they had purchased were sold off and more than 200 stores were closed. Kmart made a short-lived comeback with their big Kmart format, which essentially just widened the shopping easels. They also partnered with Yahoo to get their own website, but if you try visiting it now, you will see just how well that went. In 1997, Matthew Stewart partnered with Kmart to sell a brand of bed sheets and shampoo, and that fooled investors initially, but it soon became clear that Kmart really was going down. They sold all of their Canadian stores in 1998, which briefly made them profitable again. But then, Kmart made the causally stupid decision of trying to undercut Walmart. The brief price war quickly devoured with little margins Kmart had left. And on January 22nd, 2002, Kmart filed for bankruptcy. Although not unexpected, it was still the largest retailer bankruptcy in history and the sheer scale of it left few buyers on the table. One of of them was Eddie Lampert, the chairman of Kmart who also had a large stake on Sears. Like Kmart, Sears was a struggling department store and Eddie thought if he merged the two together, two wrongs would magically make a right. After lumping the two chains together in 2005, Eddie saved Kmart from downright oblivion, but his solution was only temporary. Every year more and more Kmart's close and the ones that remain open report ever declining sales. While Target and Walmart renovated and improved, Kmart remained drastically underfunded with crumbling buildings and untrained staff that made the shopping experience exceedingly unpleasant. The brand has totally lost its identity and yet its demise has been surprisingly silent. Eddie Lampert has made so few attempts at saving Kmart and it is fair to wonder whether he even wants to do that at all. His other chain, Sears, has also been doing terribly and just this July his company narrowly avoided bankruptcy by promising to close even more stores. Employees have been extremely critical of him calling him out of touch with the reality and judging by his performance he seems like a captain that is determined to go down with his ship when Kmart inevitably finds itself in another round of bankruptcy proceedings who knows whether it'll just get auctioned off and forgotten or whether someone will be brave enough to attempt reviving this fallen giant once again Thanks a lot for watching and as always, stay smart.